Member for Light. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. Mr. Acting Speaker, I'd like to uh, 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 make just a few comments in support of the appropriation bill. And, <coughs> and the first thing I'd like to uh, just point out, from my point of view, uh, the appropriation bill is, just, is more than just an economic statement. Of course, there's a lot of financials in the, in the appropriation in the budget itself, in the appropriation bill. But I think it's also important because it speaks to the priorities and values of the government who deliver that budget, and that's very important. This budget is very different from the previous budget. Uh, a, you know, a future Labor federal budget will be very, very different to the previous Morrison budget, and that's because our values are different, our priorities are different, and it is important to understand that when you uh, hand down a budget. It's not just talking about. It's, it's talking about what is in, what is important to the government, how that government sees its community, its society, and what sort of society it wants. For, uh, you know, if you're giving, for example, in the federal, in the, like the Commonwealth government does, if you're giving huge tax deductions to multinational companies, it talks about a lot about your values, what's important when we have people living in substandard aged care facilities in Australia. So the budget actually is more than just a, a financial document. It talks about that government's priorities, that government's values, and that sort of society you want. So, the pri so the, how we prioritise expenditure is very important. From my point of view, Labor government stands for to, to create, help create a fairer and much more equitable society, and one which is actually much more compassionate as well. And I think this budget does that. And I'll just provide some, uh, some details of how it does that in terms of the priorities we do and how it prioritises the needs of the most vulnerable in our community to make sure, <coughs> to make sure that nobody is left behind. But in doing so, this budget also uh, acknowledges that we actually need to have economic activity to create that wealth so we can actually redistribute funds to support those in need. When you look at this, this budget, Mr. Mr. Acting Speaker, you, the, the things which come to mind are quite clear. Health, education, environment and jobs. They're the key themes, or if you, if you like, about this budget. And they're the things which uh, are dear to Labor values. And they, are, and they also talk, talk about the things which we think are most important to ensure that people have a quality of life in our state, irrespective of the postcode they live in. And this is what this budget does. It delivers health services, improves the education opportunities, improves the environment, and creates, helps create jobs in those areas to make sure that we, everybody who's every child born in this society, every person has a chance to reach their full potential. When we come to health, uh, some, of the, some of the overviews in terms of health, we are funding 101 additional doctors, 300 additional nurses. And that's important because one of the major issues which is obviously we've been dealing with over the last four years is ramping at our hospitals. Now, building additional ED space is important, but that doesn't get rid of ramping. Uh, having additional ambos is very important, but it doesn't get rid of the ramping. What gets rid, rid, rid of ramping is actually having more doctors and nurses to actually deal with the patients which come into the health system. And having more beds, and having the money to fund those beds, the doctors and nurses to actually look after those people in those beds. We also have introduced <coughs> free flu vaccinations, which I think is very important for both an equity point of view to make sure we encourage people to do it, um, but also it means that we're going to actually have to hopefully have less people in the queues at our hospital and our health system as well. So it makes good economic and health sense to do that. Uh, and of those 326 extra hospital and health, mental health beds we, we are going to create over the, over the, over the life of this bed, there will be 16 additional subacute beds in the Gawler Health Service. So those additional health service beds in the Gawler Health Service means that people who come to ED, present to the hospital, they actually will have a, have a bed and that can be processed so that, again, the queuing and the waiting times at our hospital services is reduced. The 350 paramedics very important to make sure to make sure that when things go wrong in your life that you know there'll be somebody there in a clinically safe period of time to make sure you get the best possible health care or get to the best possible health facility as soon as possible 
And those 350 paramedics are extremely important. And I'm very happy to hear that uh, part of those 350 will be actually coming to Gawler. They'll be part of a new additional shift, a new a unit in the Gawler, in the Gawler, um, Gawler uh, ambulance service. We have one ambulance service in Gawler at the moment, so when it's out of town, we have no coverage. We have limited coverage. And, and the people have actually had to wait for hours. And there has been some evidence to suggest that some risk, lives have been put at risk as the, because of the poor response times. Not because of the AMBOs themselves, just that there's not the resources there to make sure. You cannot be in two places at once. If you're ramped up at the Lyle McEwen, or you're ramped up at the Royal Adelaide Hospital, or you're transferring a patient from the Gawler Health Service to another, another health facility, it's just not possible to be in two places as at once. And so I'm very pleased to hear that we actually get an additional full-time unit in Gawler. In total, in terms of health, we'll be spending an additional $2.4 billion over the next five years. That is a huge investment in the well-being of our community. It's a huge investment in the well-being of our community, and we'll start tackling those, those problems we've seen with our health services over the last four years during the life of the previous Liberal government. Education. Uh, most people, I, I would say, would accept that having a, a good education is, can be a life changer. Simple. It, it certainly was for me. You know, my opportunity to, to, to go to a good public school, to go to university, made my life different. Uh, if, without, the, without that, I would have a different job, perhaps less opportunities, perhaps um, be able to um, you know, have less income, a whole range of things which come from that. Having the opportunity to access, equal access, equal opportunity to the best possible education, uh, it is so important. And that's one of the main reasons why my, my parents left Italy, to ensure us as children had the best opportunities possible, and our education system did that. And when I compare my own life to my, to my numerous cousins in Italy, uh, and now I'm numerous because mum was one of ten children, dad one, one of five, one of five children, uh, is that our lives are very different. You know? Our lives are very different, and also the lives of my sisters are very different to those of my cousins in Italy who, who, who stay there. So education is very important, something which I, I'm very supportive of, and what I try to do is work with my schools to make sure every child has the best opportunity to have the best education possible. So what are we doing in that area? We are building five technical colleges uh, to acknowledge that we need a broad range of skills in our community to make sure that the economy works well. We need a broad range of skills to reflect the abilities and, and preferences of people in our community. Not everybody wants to go to, um, wants to go to university. Not everybody thinks studying economics like I did is an exciting thing. Uh, I did, but a lot of other people wouldn't find that exciting. Uh, and I can understand that. And so we need to make sure that people have opportunities to, do, to be the best people they can be, the best they can be, by providing those different uh, educational uh, opportunities. We're providing mental health su support, uh, more mental health support in our schools. Um, those children who are not present at school, and I don't mean necessarily mean physically present, but those children who have some mental health issue or a whole range of other pressures, anxieties, etc., who are not present at school are not learning. When you speak to teachers, when you speak to young student leaders like I have been, when I engage, for example, my youth advisory panel um, and we talk about things, what's happening in their schools, is that there's no point uh, you know, teachers trying to teach when some of their students are not present because of a whole range of issues. This mental health support is so critical to make sure that our young people are fully engaged in their education and their schooling to get the best they can out of it. We're also going to provide more support for students with autism, which is very important. Uh, again, this is about what I talked about a bit earlier. This budget reflects the sort of society and the sort of values our party has. We want to make sure that every child, irrespective, has the best opportunity to be the best they can be as a person. And that means having access to the right education services. The Royal Commission to look at um, how we actually uh, improve our early, early uh, learning, early education for three and four year olds. Um, the research is quite clear. Um, those, young, those children who have better access to early learning opportunities do better through schooling. 
do better through schooling, do better through life. And so we need to make sure that irrespective of which postcode you live in, you should have access to the best possible early, early learning opportunities possible. And that means also looking at out of school, out of, out of school hours care, because we need, a, we need a, a new education system, a schooling system, which reflects the modern family. We do. We, we, we still have a uh, we still have a system of education which reflects, which hasn't actually changed much in terms of the basic structure since I was a student at school, and that's quite a few years ago. And I think that uh, this the whole um, schooling of, of based on, on models of the 1950s and 60s need to change. The world has changed, uh, families have changed, family needs have changed. So we need to actually make sure that education system changes the way we structure our schools um, meets the needs of our families in our communities. We're making a huge investment in, in, in TAFE again. Uh, it is no secret that TAFE was run, run into the ground by the previous government. You know? uh, and at times they talked about you know, the competitive model, that TAFE should not have an advantage against the private sector, and they actually put money into the private sector. But I found it curious that the competitive model meant TAFE could actually not offer programs in certain areas. For example, they couldn't offer business studies in metropolitan Adelaide. They couldn't offer a whole range of other programs in certain areas. Only the private sector could. So how, how do you have a competitive model when you actually one of the, one of the competitors is actually not, not, not allowed to compete in the marketplace? We are redressing that imbalance again to make sure that uh, we are investing in those areas which are of great need, particularly the, the caring services. Um, it is no secret there's a huge shortage of people in the caring service, whether it's in the disability sector, aged care sector, a whole range of different caring services. We need to make sure that we have, we have properly trained people in those areas to make sure the people that are looking after have the best service. And we also need to really understand that we need to pay these people more money too. They, for the job they do, they don't get rewarded enough. They, they, they provide important services and need to be re rewarded for that. In the environment, uh, Mr Acting Speaker, there, there's a whole range of number of programs which, have been, which, are, which are listed there, which I, I won't go into detail, but a whole range of things which reflect this government's commitment to environment, this government's commitment to an understanding that climate change is real and there are things we can do at the local level to reduce our carbon footprint. There are a whole range of things we can do in, through land care programs, a whole range of other programs we can actually have to reduce our carbon footprint and therefore actually create, uh, cre or, yeah, create a, a cleaner society, and a, one which, which creates less waste. Simple things like the new electric trains, for example. Uh, eventually, they'll... Here, here. I, and uh, I got one last night on the way home. I was, I was so pleased. It was, it was clean, warm, and, and um, electric trains. Again, uh, quieter, cleaner, less costly, and the additional benefits of actually reducing the cost of living for people as well. Sorry? That was on Sunday I did that. On Sunday I did that, yes. <laughs> on Sunday. Uh, on order, Sunday. order. Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, on Sunday morning I was up. I caught the first electric train which started at Gawler Central Station. I was there at 6.25 with hundreds of other people. And during that day, I think thousands of people came out to see the new electric trains. So I then had to come into the city for the official opening. Uh, oh, okay. uh, official opening. And also, Mr Speaker, I had to uh, obviously go back to Gawler again on the trains. It was great. I did very quickly, in a few minutes I got left, Mr, Mr. Sp Acting Speaker. I think this, the next thing we need to talk about is jobs. Jobs are so important, critical. Mm. Uh, and our leader has, on a number of occasions, talked about the importance of jobs and the dignity that work provides to people's lives. And so and it wouldn't be a Labor government which actually didn't put jobs as one of its key priorities. The $593 million hydrogen jobs plan, uh, good for the environment, good for industry, uh, so we, and, and also good for jobs. Uh, Mr. Speaker, that we, there's a whole range of other, pro, other programs in terms of arts, music, the fringe, live music, housing, another important area. We are investing $177.5 million over the next four years to build new homes and also to refurbish existing housing, housing stock to make sure that people 
can get a roof over their, home, over their head. We have an $18.6 billion infrastructure program. Of that, $7.83 billion will go into roads, which are important. Those things not only, it's not only building important infrastructure, but also creating jobs. At the local level, Mr Speaker, I'll close off. I'm very pleased to say that every commitment I have made to, the, to the, my community will be honoured in this budget. Every promise made by, on my, uh, I made on behalf of the, of the Labor Party, now the Labor government, will be honoured in this budget. And there will be uh, $60,000 for disability infrastructure at the playground at Apex Park, $100,000 for improvements to playgrounds at Blackton Street, Evanston and Gawler West, $2.5 million to improve parking and kiss and drop-off zone near Mark Island College to reduce, um, to reduce congestion and to improve road safety. $30,000 for Schaefer Playground and Island Reserve Manapara to provide a safer playing area. $380,000 for pedestrian crossing Red Banks and Wayland Road to improve, to improve safety of the students from Xavier College uh, who walk. Uh, important, very important project. Uh, Six hundred thousand dollars for a new playground at Reed, one of the, one of my, the suburbs of Gawler, and very important as well, which has poor infrastructure. Five hundred thirty thousand dollars to upgrade the Tambin Station car park to kiss and drops off zone, which at the moment it's just a, it's just dirt. We got to actually get a proper area which people can actually promote public transport, which is very important. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars for veterans shed, veterans garage in in Williston next next door, to be co-located with Willows Men's Shed. $4.8 million for netball courts for the young women, the girls and young women in Gawler who actually uh, were, um, who play netball. And there's over 15, 16 clubs who play in this association, and it's a very important investment there. A million dollars for the for the um, the, Gawler, the Gawler Soccer Club for a synthetic um, synthetic pitch. And Mr. Mr. Speaker, yes, we will be undertaking a feasibility study to see where the Barossa tourism train can be a viable option for the future with private investment. And we're also undertaking uh, traffic management studies, east-west studies for Curtis and Dalkeith roads to improve traffic management in those areas uh, in my electorate. Mr. Mr Speaker, but that, it doesn't stop there. There is more. There is two, there's over $2 million for new SES station in, uh, in Gawler to, to, for community safety, something which the Liberals talked about. We are actually going to do it. We are actually going to deliver on that. And that, uh, Mr. Speaker, one thing about this budget is that what we promised is what we're going to deliver, and that's why we got elected.